Hi there and welcome to another edition of GSC at Home. My name is Katie and I work in the planetarium at the Glasgow Science Centre. And I have a question for you. Would you like to go to Mars? I would definitely love to go to Mars, but it's really far away. And it's what we call an extreme environment, which means it might not be suitable for us as humans to go up there. So if we want to have a look around, what could we send instead? We could send a robot, or a rover as we like to call them. The European Space Agency is getting ready to send a new rover up to the surface of Mars. And today I thought I would tell you a little bit about it. Not only that, I thought we could make our very own rover, just to make it a little bit more exciting. The ExoMars, otherwise known as the Rosalind Franklin Rover, is being sent up to Mars in 2022. And it has been designed and made right here in the UK. And it's even been named after one of our British chemists, Rosalind Franklin, whose discoveries helped us to understand DNA and life. So it's a pretty good name for a rover that's heading up to Mars to look for signs of life. In 2003, we sent up Spirit and Opportunity. Now these rovers gave us a really good idea that there was once water, liquid water, on the surface of Mars. Liquid water is the key to life as we know it. So Rosalind Franklin, the rover, is heading up there now to look for organic material or signs of life to go along with that liquid water that was once on the surface of Mars. Now, the Rosalind Franklin rover is about 1.5 meters long and 1.2 meters across. That's about the size of six washing machines all squashed in together. Our rover is not going to be quite that big. Instead, we're going to make it out of things that we can find in our house. I've had a look around my recycling and I have found this egg carton, which I thought would make a perfect rover body. Now, once we've chosen our rover body, we need to think about how it might get around. The Rosalind Franklin rover has six wheels, all individually steered and driven to deal with the varied terrain on Mars. Now, Mars's terrain, or the surface of Mars, is quite varied. It sometimes is really rocky and sometimes really sandy. So we need to make sure that our wheels, or maybe even legs or treads, can deal with that variation in the landscape of Mars. I have chosen four big cardboard wheels like this. Now you might want to think about how many wheels you might put on your rover. If you have too many, it might be too heavy. And if you don't have enough, it might get stuck on some of those big rocks. So have a think about that. We next need to think about how our camera is going to see, how it's going to navigate around the surface of Mars. Well, the Rosalind Franklin rover has a panoramic camera sitting on a mast just over a meter above the body of the rover. Now this panoramic camera takes 360 degree photos, which means it sees all the way around the rover. It puts all of these photos together to create a map of Mars that helps scientists choose where to drive the rover to next. So we need to have a camera so our rover can see. I have a paper straw here that I thought would be a really good mast. And I have a little plastic container that I thought could be a really good camera for the top of uh, my rover. As well as seeing, we need to make sure that it's not going to bump into anything. Now, Rosalind Franklin has collision avoidance cameras on the front of the rover. These cameras make sure that it's not, as I say, going to bump into anything because it is actually traveling really quickly. It travels about 14 kilometers an hour. And for a rover, that is pretty quick. So those collision avoidance cameras are incredibly important. Now, we also need to think about how we're going to power our rover. Up on Mars, there is no petrol stations, so our rover can't just get petrol whenever it runs out. It needs to use something that is up there on Mars to create electricity. We use the same technology here on Earth, solar panels. 
It takes that heat and light energy from the sun and creates electricity from it so we can power our houses or in this case we can power our rover as well. Now for my solar panels I have an extra bit of cardboard here and I have some tin foil as well to make those solar panels. Once we've thought about the power or the electricity for our rover we also want to think about what we want it to do. What do we want it to look for on the surface of Mars? As I said, Rosalind Franklin is going up to look for organic material or signs of life on Mars. And for that, it has a drill that can go down two meters under the surface of Mars to collect rock samples that it tests in its onboard laboratory. I'm going to put a drill on my rover and again I'm going to use my tin foil to make that. Now before we put it all together we might want to think about how. So you might want to grab some scissors. Any younger viewers might want an adult to help them with the scissors. You will need something to stick it all together. You will need some tape. You could use clear tape or I've got some pretty cool coloured tape here. That I'm going to use or you could use some glue as well. Just whatever you have at home to put your rover together. You might even want to decorate and I have some decorations here because that is definitely my favourite part. Now that we've gathered everything together, shall we get started? And there we go, I have finished making my rover and here is the finished product. You can see those big wheels on the side there for driving over Mars's rocky terrain. I've got my big camera on the front so my rover can see where it's going. And those big silver panels on the back capturing all that heat and light energy from the sun. And of course I have my drill on the front as well to collect all of those rock samples. I've had some of my friends from GSC make a rover as well. This one here is definitely my favourite. And I really hope that you have enjoyed making your rover as well. Before we go there though, there is just one more thing that we need to think about. And that is of course a name. The European Space Agency named their rover the Rosalind Franklin Rover. You could name yours after a scientist that you admire as well. Or you could come up with a brand new name yourself. Personally, I have decided to call my rover Smash and I've put its name right at the front there. I've called it Smash because I've named it after my dog who is a great adventurer and so I thought it was the perfect name. Thank you so much for watching today. Hopefully you have enjoyed yourself and we will see you next time for another episode of GSC at Home.